Well, this is my one tube AM radio transmitter. It's based on the uh, antique electronic supply uh, kit, which is itself based on the old Zenith wireless record player design. Uh, so, circuit design is based on that. I added the the, uh, the chassis, the original kit, as sold by Anti Electronic Supply. Uh, you mount it on a piece of wood, which doesn't seem very safe because of all the uh, high voltages. You can get up to you know, 100 and 170 volts or so with this design. So, just in a chassis for safety, and of course, the chassis is grounded. And I've used an IEC connector for power on the back. Um, just sort of make it more convenient. Uh, you don't have to have a cord hanging out of it all the time if you're going to store it. Um, power switch, quarter inch connector, and an adapter for iPods, and just a little uh, binding post banana connector for an antenna. Um, these two, the switch and the IEC connector, were established off an old PC power supply. Um, the rest of these were just bits and pieces I had lying around. And of course, the chassis and all the parts inside were actually purchased from Antique Electronics Supply. So I'll go ahead and show you the inside of the transmitter. Uh, I took the four screws out of the bottom already, and I'll show you. This is a little bit different from sort of the traditional design of building inside the chassis because what I've done here is I've built on the base plate of the chassis. Um, I did this on the suggestion of a co-worker who said it might be easier to uh, get in here and work on uh, the, the uh, circuit if I built it this way. And it actually turned out to be true, um, so that was a good suggestion. So the tube socket is just mounted on some brass standoffs. These were a little too long, so I had to machine these down, uh, make them a little bit shorter so they fit in the box. Um, we have just a piece of sheet metal that's bent that the transformer is mounted to. Um, I know some people about the transformers outside. This wasn't a shielded transformer, so I went ahead and put it in the box again for safety. Um, you can see all the connectors here, of the backs of those, how that's all wired up. Um, getting a little bit closer on the circuit here. And what I did here was I just ran a uh, single bare piece of copper wire around here and that was sort of the ground bus. Um, everything is point to point soldered. Uh, it's just sort of hanging in midair, which actually works fairly well. Um, I put this piece of white poster board down. I cut a piece of white poster board and put it here as, as insulation because I thought that there might be more of a chance of stuff hanging down and, and touching the base plate, which would be bad because the base plate's going to be grounded. But it turned out that. Um, the point-to-point -point wiring in this sort of um, grid like this um, is, is actually pretty stable. It doesn't it doesn't want to droop or anything. It's all suspended by the solder connections to the tube socket and uh, by this by this wire here actually. Um, so it worked out pretty well. So just some of the components here. Here's the actual the, the tuning uh, the coil to set the carrier frequency of the transmitter. Um, various capacitors and resistors that are part of the circuit, um, power supply filtering, um, here's our diode for rectification, just all the general parts you'd expect to see. One modification I did make to the uh, original Hammond uh, chassis box was to add these uh, threaded inserts uh, in place of just the plain uh, holes that were drilled here to uh, secure the bottom plate. Uh, this again was something I did on the suggestion of a co-worker. Uh, just because I knew that I'd be taking these screws in and out a lot, uh, it turns out that you know this this actually makes is, is better than just the the, uh, sh the hole that was drilled in the original sheet metal. It gives you something threaded to go into. It doesn't wear the the hole out. Uh, and you can use a nice machine screw. So these are just 632 threaded inserts. Okay, so now I've got a radio out so we can actually give the tube transmitter a try. So let's go ahead and turn on the power for the radio. Turn on the power for the transmitter. And when the tube warms up, 
the uh, static on the radio should go away. Okay, so the transmitter is working now. The tube's warmed up. And we'll go ahead and we'll get the iPod going here. There we go. The sound quality is uh, pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, range is a little bit of another story. If I take the radio and back up. You can hear it fades out uh, pretty quickly. It doesn't have uh, spectacular range or anything like that. But uh, all in all, I'm, I'm fairly happy with this for a first two project. I, I know that um, uh, some of the you know, old-time radio guys on some of the forums don't really like this design because there are better designs out there. In particular, I've heard of a design using a 6888 tube that's supposed to be a lot better. Uh, but this was just supposed to be kind of a fun first tube project for me, and it was. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I'd like to get a little bit more range. And I've read that people have gotten more range with this design, so uh, if anybody has any suggestions, I'd be curious to hear them. Uh, just remains, like, supposed to say uh, thanks to some people. So thanks to my coworker Doug, for uh, some, some help and advice on uh, doing the enclosure. Uh, thanks to John, better known as KE4MWL, for helping me get the hole cut for the tube socket. And uh, thanks to Cameraman Link and his website and his YouTube channel for uh, sort of providing some, some of the inspiration um, to attempt my first tube project, uh, thanks to his, his uh, neat projects that he works on.